Never awake may sound like the summary of my school report, but no, this is a twin stick shoot 'em up with a really fascinating art style and gameplay flow. It's out on the Switch this week, and today we're gonna take a look at it. Before we get into it, just a reminder that down below there is a subscribe button. It's right there somewhere, and you can do what you want with it. I just thought I'd remind you about it. And my brand new channel, A Bit More Jordan, for a lot more me. Go check that out. It's really good. Alright, Never Awake is a shooter that instantly got my attention. Firstly, because it's a Japanese import exclusive with English. You know I've got to cover as many of them as possible. But also, just look at it. What an intriguing art style. And they even had the gall to try and add a thought-provoking story to it. To a shooter! Usually the only kind of thought I have when playing shooters is blow stuff up good. Whereas here, they try to add some sort of culture to proceedings. And I don't mean that kind of culture, okay? Sorry to disappoint. This has a story about a girl called Rem, laying in a hospital bed in some kind of coma. You play as someone who resembles the girl delving into her psyche. Maybe battling the demons can help her recover. I will say, I appreciate the effort. It's a nice attempt to make the game seem more like a legitimate product or something, but personally, after a few cutscenes, I was just enjoying the gameplay so much, I just wanted to get the cutscenes over with and blow monsters up, because the gameplay is really good. So Never Awake is a multi-directional shooter that has the side-scrolling going in all sorts of directions. Thankfully, it is twin-stick so you can shoot in whichever direction you please. There are tons of levels here, but the goal of each is to collect the souls of the enemies you defeat. If you fill up the meter to 100%, the level is complete. That seems simple enough, but Never Awake throws a very unique spanner in the works because the levels themselves are quite short, and once you reach the end of it, if you haven't collected 100% of the souls yet, the level will loop, playing through it again with increasing difficulty. More enemies, more aggressive, more bullets to dodge. You can keep looping, and looping levels if you want to, intentionally avoiding the souls. Why would you do that? Well, I heard some people like high scores. Yeah, this is actually the meta game for Score Attack Fiends. Personally, while it's a unique take on shmup looping, I don't think it's something that entirely works for me. Although I've never really been about high scores and not actually having a finite end, you pretty much have to cash in when you decide it's getting too hot for you. It makes it feel like it doesn't have boundaries that work so well with score attacks. But that's coming from me, someone who's never really been into that aspect to start with. Maybe more hardcore shooter fans will see the nuance much better than I. I'm not sure. I mean, if you come here for expert analysis, you're doing it wrong. But either way, it's fine because Never Awake offers a good time whether you're into high scores or not, because this has a lot going for it. There are so many levels filled to the brim with haunting, terrifying enemies, loads of unique boss encounters, customization, and it's just a bloody good time. I am well impressed with Never Awake. A lot of the fun comes in the equipment and accessories. Firstly, you have a panic bomb type of attack, and there are plenty of different kinds, each offering a tactical advantage over different types of enemies and their patterns. You unlock these over the course of the game, paying for them with the souls you pick up. Then there's accessories which can alter your abilities slightly. You can equip items that may help refill your health after a while. One that makes collecting souls a lot easier even increasing the power of your attack, or if you're into tactically playing for high scores, make soul gathering more difficult. I was really impressed with the variety, and although I didn't try them all, I know if I went and played a game, I could have a different experience choosing different things. It is a shooter that has the balance in difficulty just right. It's not going to make you beg for mercy, nor is it a game that you'll play while also marathoning Futurama for the 20th time. Or maybe that's just me. They nailed it! There aren't any difficulty settings per se, but if you keep ballsing up, you can activate a super mode, I think. I didn't really get to that point to try. Although some of the bosses almost made it because they can be difficult, and they are also delightful. There are loads of bosses here, all completely unique, from a worm-ridden aubergine, and yes, I'm saying aubergine, you can bugger off with your eggplant nonsense. There's a three-eyed dentist and even a pommel horse, because why not? This is such a unique game. 
and they are tough but doable. As long as you take advantage of your dash ability and think about the right setup for each one, you can do it. And again, the really unique thing about this game, if you're playing casually, you won't even defeat the bosses properly because you'll end up collecting all the souls before you've even finished them off with damage. How weird is that? But it's good because it kind of offers two playstyles in one. Now, Never Awake is available digitally. At full price, it's $25 in the US, £20 in the UK. That is quite expensive for a shmup. You can't really get around that, but it's not the most egregious one out there. I mean, compared to something like $40 for Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Plus, this is a very unique game with a lot of love put into it. There's plenty of content for a shooter, a lot of promise for replayability. You'll be looking at like 5 or 6 hours just to play all the levels. There's loads of them, plus as many hours as you want in the meta game. And I do think it's a game that will be fun to replay from the beginning to end. And if you want some eShop credit, check switchwatch.net. You can grab some there. But this is also available physically, but only in Japan both in a standard edition and collector's edition. Thankfully, it does have English so you can import it and keep a copy for yourself to keep forever or sell it on once you've had your fill. If you want to purchase it, check the links in the description and the pinned comment. That's where you'll find it. And if you purchase it, you can also support us at the same time. Now, currently, Play Asia does not say anything about English, but it is there. Trust me, they'll update it once they realize. And if you click our link, we can also support you. You can get 5% off any physical item with our current discount code SWTV23. That will be good until the end of March. So if you're watching this in the future, subscribe and watch the latest Let's Get Physical video every Monday for the latest code updates. Please remember to click our link first as that is the way to support us properly. And by the way, the collector's edition will also include a soundtrack CD, an art book, and a magnet of some kind, whatever that is. And speaking of soundtrack and art, I think we can all agree the presentation for Never Awake is pretty sweet, so that collector's edition is looking nice. Firstly, the music. They've done the Spooky McSpookytons genre a lot of justice here. It is the soundtrack that would be perfect around Halloween time, well made, but not endlessly cheesy. And it fits the deranged visuals very well indeed. There's a nice variety in here too, and I often notice the music as an integral part of the experience, bringing the presentation together a lot. It's fantastic. And visually, you can see this is something rather special for a shooter. It's such a unique looking game. It reminded me a lot of uh, Little Nightmares, the surreal horror game from Bandai, but now in shooter form. The 3D character model of our hero pitted against the hand-drawn amazing backgrounds and enemies thematically is wonderful, with each world having its own special theme like a hospital, school, the home, and even on the road, each offering something traumatic within Rem's life. Dentists, yes. Education, of course, horrendous. Where she lost me is when she started to besmirch the good name of dogs. There's an entire world dedicated to freakish canines. It's brilliantly designed, but come on, dogs are wonderful. Everything is just perfectly designed. The enemies, the backgrounds, the themes. There's a whole level dedicated to hiding in the school toilet from bullies. It's well thought out. I could keep yapping on about how good looking this game is, but I'm pretty sure over the course of this video, you've witnessed it for yourself. Overall, I think Never Awake is a really neat shooter. It's universally accessible, yet offers some hardcore gameplay. It's something different, and yet feels immediately familiar in its mechanics. It's a game that cares about longevity, as it's got plenty of content. Score attackers may not enjoy this as much, but I don't think Never Awake is really about that. It has impeccable presentation, addictive unique gameplay, surprising length, and I think it's a really nice time and one I would highly recommend. An 8.5 out of 10. All right, many thanks for watching. If you watched all the way through, leave me a dog emoji in the comments in order to bring the good name of dogs back to where they belong. If you want to pick it up physically, check the links in the description. Thank you for your support. Be sure to subscribe and check out Monday's weekly physicals video where I give you all the updates that physical Switch collectors need. Never Awake featured in the last episode along with a couple of other tasty import exclusives that the world needs to know about. Anyways, I'll see you over there. Have a good day.